Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie Ani coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here in Six Rivers National Forest near Willow Creek, California. I'm back from my trip. I'm renewed and invigorated. I have a ton of ideas and a lot of things that we will be um, talking about and new projects that we will have working on coming up starting in May. Hello. Um, I, there are two different things that I want to focus on. One is I do want to do a great introduction to altered books, and that's what this video will be about. The second um, thing that I want to work on is um, going to be um, not necessarily more advanced, but maybe a little bit more advanced. Um, so new ideas, new thoughts, and just... <laughs> So you guys that have been with me forever, you're going to love some of these projects coming up, I hope. I hope they turn out the way I'm seeing them. And um, as you know, I get some crazy ideas, and those ideas are getting written down. But, uh, and also Patreons, you're going to have some really cool stuff coming up. Promise. And thank you for sticking with me through April. I know it was kind of a hard month, um, but I will get you some really cool things coming up. Promise 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 okay so this is going to be an intro this is the intro to altered book so you're going to be creating your very first altered book yay um thank you good i'm glad you found me this is going to be fun and you're going to love it and i'm really going to uh work on making it as clear as possible now you might be going what the heck is an altered book and what is an art journal and what is a travel journal what's a junk journal what's this what's that i keep hearing all these terms and what do they all mean and and frankly i was in the same spot not that long ago so i have uh decided that i'm going to go through and just give you a quick rundown of what all the different things are so first off you know we think about all the different journal possibilities that we have right um, starting with just a standard journal. And now for me, the prettier the journal, the more I'm going to use it. This is one that I took with me. Looky, flat Aussie. Uh, this is one that I took with me on my trip to Europe. It is filled up with ideas. I loved carrying this book with me. It's a great size. It's a great shape. I, um, draw in it. I bullet point in it. I, you know, um, just different thoughts. So my journal, this is travel journal. Uh, it's not necessarily an art journal because we'll talk about that in a second. But um, again, these are uh, on my Etsy store if you're interested. I do have numerous painted lined notebooks and they're a great size to work with. Uh, but with these, you definitely want something that you're going to use, right? So this one was perfect. Perfect size. You know, it doesn't feel daunting. I would love to actually fill up a notebook one of these days. And this one is getting there because there's so many ideas that I have going. All right. Junk journal. What is a junk journal? This is one of the junk journals that I've made that I also have for sale in my Etsy store. Now, a junk journal is a collection of random papers, kind of old papers, coffee dyed papers, coffee stained papers, um, different pictures. You know, this is just something that you're going to, mm, I mean, you can easily do a collage on one of these pieces of paper. You can, uh, you know, stick another piece of paper over the top of this, uh, or a note card or whatever, and, and, and you embellish a junk journal however you want to do it now making a junk journal is quite a process it is absolutely a process um so if you are going to do it be sure to use papers that you like okay <laughs> use things that inspire you or that you think will inspire somebody else if it's a gift um you know it's it's important to use paper that is pleasing that feels good, that has a good texture. Junk journals, okay? Mixture of different papers. 
essentially. And that's, I think I have three of those left for sale. Okay. A sketchbook. Here's one of my sketchbooks. So I bought this sketchbook thinking, oh my gosh, it's so nice and big. It's so pretty. Da 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 da. There's one of my drawings, right? Well, look at this. It's empty. It's all empty, except for that one beautiful drawing. Why is it empty? Well, because it's heavy and it's clunky and it's not something that I want to carry around with me. And it, the front cover didn't make me happy. And then even if I decide to cover the front cover, it's still really heavy. So most likely what I'm gonna do is dissect this and use the paper off of it because I've had this book for probably nine or 10 years. I'm never gonna take it with me. It's too heavy to put in my backpack. And after you put a bottle of water in there with a journal, that's too much. Okay, uh, and then you have kind of a hybrid. Now this is my art journal. Um, this is a journal that we made on um, Patreon together and I have prepped all the pages through here. It's ready to go. Patreons, I'm not going to show you this uh, because this is an art journal. So you can mess up in an art journal. You know, this is kind of messed up. I haven't fixed it yet. Um, but I do love this background. So I'm going to practice backgrounds. I'm going to practice little inspirational things and Patreons we are going to do a May journal with me, promise, okay? I'm gonna actually probably work on that today. It's, uh, I think it's the last Sunday in April today. All right, so that is the different terms. There are no rules for any of them. Anybody who says, well, you can't do this and that, or you can't do that and this, they're full of poop, okay? Do whatever you want to in whatever book you wanna do it in, okay? There are no rules. And if, if somebody says there's rules, you know, there's nothing to do wrong. The only thing that you can do wrong is like with that red book and never use it, right? That's what we want to avoid. So we want to make sure that we're using something that we like to work in. So this is an altered book. So this book, could easily go to something like this, but this is more my practice book. It's a journal, it's a place to jot ideas and work through ideas. An altered book is more of a finished piece of art, right? I have taken this book from its original shape and context and made it into something completely different. This was my first altered book and this will be what we will be working in um, and replicating some of those projects in the days to come, okay? I don't know if all of you have seen my circus book. This is uh, altered book uh, monstrosity times five. So don't ever let people tell you what an altered book can be or can't be, because again, they're full of poop. It's an art project. This is a piece of art, right? Right? It's cool stuff. Okay, so how do we choose an altered book? How do we choose the right book? How did I choose those books to work in? All of my books, I basically get from either the library bookstore or a thrift store or something like that. I never pay a lot of money for them. And on top of it, um, you know, it... Uh, they're, they're most likely going to be books that are not the highest quality. I do have a full box now of first editions. Excuse me, I think I have two or three boxes of first editions that will never get used as an altered book. So the first thing that I look for, and uh, so first thing I look for is whether the book has a signature or whether it's glued. Oh, that light. Okay. So if you look at this book, you see how it is straight and flat across. It's a pile of pages glued together and then put into the binding. This one, if you look where the dot is, 
right, you can see that there are little V's in that seam. So the V's are actually your signatures. They're groups of pages that have been stacked upon each other. It's called a signature, right? Pages that are stacked. So there'll be uh, individual pages stacked up and sewn into the book. So they create that V and then that V gets put into the binding and then the cover gets put over it. So it's, it's very important to look for a signature. For me, some people like to use glued pages. I do not like to use glued pages because I think they're hard to get out of the book. And we do need to remove pages. As you can see, both of these are very chunky books. Um, the Godfather is a book for me to read. It is not a book for me to destroy. It is not a book that would be a candidate for me for an altered book anyway. Okay, so we're looking for a signature. Now, you might think, oh, there's a pretty old book. It's a pretty old book. Well, here's what we're looking for here on this guy, right? It has signatures. It has nice yellowed pages. It has a great texture to it. It's super fragile, guys. This thing will fall apart within two layouts, within two pages. I mean, it's just going to fall apart. The cover is about to fall off. The seam binding in there is pretty well disintegrated. So that is not a good candidate. Then we have a book like this one which also has signatures to it. It has nice yellowed pages, right? But here's, here's the issue with this book. A, it's really skinny. So you're not gonna get very many layout pages in it. And um, B, these pages are super fragile. They pull out that easy. So this book um, I did pick up at the uh, library book sale. It was a buck. I knew that this book has poetry in it. Uh, this poetry is one, or it's, it's an ephemera book for me. And we'll talk about ephemera next week. Um, so this is not a candidate because those pages are so fragile and they can pull out so easily. All you're going to do is drive yourself crazy. And we don't want to do that, right? Um, where was the other one? Okay, so then we can take something like this that has signatures. It's a nice size. It's a perfect size here. I prefer around an eight by five inch book. Well, you can use whatever size you want to. But look at these pages. You know, it's not gonna fall apart. It's in really good condition, but those pages don't inspire me to work at all. Now, it really doesn't make a difference Newer books can have seam bindings in them. It doesn't make a difference what the pages really look like because we're gonna sit there and we're gonna cover every single inch of those pages. You will not see any of the original book text left in there. However, that being said, I still want something that has a little bit of age to it, a little bit of yellowing, a little bit of happiness. And that's just my personal preference. You can use a brand new book as long as it has a signature to it. Okay, um, so this was a book that I had picked out and started to work on. I had gone through and separated all, all the signatures because when I first started doing this, I had a hard time finding the signatures and they can still be difficult. So um, the reason I think why I did not continue to work on this is that this book is a little bit too small for me. I prefer to work a little bit larger but this would be really a nice little um, uh, journal size. Uh, altered book size, yes, altered book, but nothing that's going to be extravagant. This is going to be a great... Um, I like more room to work, personal preference. Pages are good. It's got a strong binding to it. The pages are strong. They're not going to pull out super easy. This will still be a good book to use. That's why I haven't gotten rid of it. I don't know what I was thinking with this. 
I just put it on there and then I'm like, oh, I hate it. I want to scrape it off. But then I think when I put that on that texture lily, I'm like, oh, screw it. I don't want to use that book. So, here is a nice book, right? It has signatures to it. You can see the signatures there. The pages are a little bit yellow. That's nice, right? The only thing for me for this book is it's a little too thick. Although it's probably something that I should look for more because I end up doing um, operations, especially on this last book. I've just started to learn how to do operations on my books to expand them. Um, but most people won't be doing that. And with our, with our uh, you know, series that we're going to be working on here, uh, we won't be doing that at this point in time. If you do want to learn how to do a book operation, though, I think I have two or three videos through the Circus book that will show you how to do book operations. So this is the book that I have chosen to work on for this uh, set of videos. And this is Heidi. This is not a first edition. I believe this book was published in the 50s. Now, why did I choose this book? Well, we have some age to the pages. Not a lot. Everything is strong. Um, it has some cute illustrations. So even though most likely none of these illustrations will survive the book, um, you know, it, 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 it's something pleasant to work in. And that's what is important to me. I want a pleasant book to work in. Right? And now I've already started um, working on the uh, gluing some of these pages in here and I'll show you how I do that here in just a second. Now there's a couple of questions. Um, basically, how do you start the book? Do you go back to front, front to back? And do you do the covers first or the covers last? So with my first altered book, with this one, I started in the back and I worked forward. So this was my very first altered book page that I ever did. All right? Come on, baby. We can open up a little bit more than that. All right? It was my very first one. This was my second altered book page that I ever did. And this is the one that was recently published in um, uh, Art Journal magazine with Stampington. So I worked back to front. With this one, with the circus book, I worked front to back, except for this first page. I started with page, uh, with layout number um, one on the second page. And the reason why was because I didn't know what I wanted this intro to be. Now, this book does have a theme to it. The first book does not. You can decide whether you want to use a theme or not. Um, that's entirely up to you. At first, I would suggest probably not having a theme. And then if you find something that really inspires you, then you go from there. So with these guys, as you can see, I am going extreme with these um, components that I'm building out of the book. Well, realizing that this book still has to lay flat in order for people to see it. So if I do my covers first, I am going to damage all of this work that I've done, right? So by laying it flat, by working on the book, I prefer to do covers towards the last. I have, um, how many pages in here left? I have this one center page and then I have the one front page. Um, and then this guy and finishing up the front and then that's done. Um, so I have kept the covers to the end. That's my personal preference. Now with this book, um, it has a much flatter surface. So I could have done that sooner. The only issue with doing it <clears throat> while you're still working on your other pages inside is that the other pages seem to be able to um, accept 
other paint materials getting on them, right? Um, so I'm very particular about my front covers. I know it's my showstopper. And there's times where I do not want to have any extra piece of anything on there that I didn't purposely put on there. So, you know, what if you're working on your book and you set it down and you set it into a thing of paint and it gets all blobbed right in the center of your picture? Well, that would be heartbreaking because then you'd have to go find another picture. You'd have to go put it on there. You'd have to fix it up and da 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 da. It's a lot of work. So I prefer to leave my covers for later. And the other reason why I do it too is because the covers kind of tell the inside story. And until you know what the inside feel of the book is, if you do a cover and it doesn't feel right with everything else, and you have to go back and redo the cover. I'm not a fan of redoing work. I want to do it one and done, right? Okay, so if you want to do the front cover, you do it however it makes you happy. If you want to work front to back, back to front, that is completely your choice. I have nothing to say about it. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is incorrect. The only thing I would suggest is if you start in the middle, that can be difficult um, because then you still have to work one direction and the other direction. And if you have a big fatty page, because these pages get really fat with you um, adding in all your ephemera pieces and all of that, they can get really chunky. And so if you've got a big fat page in the middle of your book like this, you know, think of putting about a pen in the middle of the book and then you have to work around that and figure out how to, how to do that. I would work from one direction or the other. It's your call. It's your choice. I'm, I'm more of a front to back type person personally. Okay. So we're going to take a quick look at this now and uh, we'll be wrapping this up shortly. Um, all right. So I've already told you that I glued these first, uh, this first signature, uh, actually, it might be almost two signatures together and got that settled in. So we're going to work with the next signature. I found the, the first page of this signature here has been glued here to the last page of the signature before it. So what we're doing is we're reinforcing the book. I mean, this page is not going anywhere. This page, I think, actually is three pages glued together, which normally we'll just do two, but I don't mind three pages to have as a um, work um, you know, canvas, uh, just because it gives a lot of stability. And that's what we're looking for. Stability, stability, stability. All right, so I did a quick count on this. This is where the um, signature ends, and this is the new signature here. So I need to glue these two pages together, right? But I'm also going to need to remove some of these pages. And you may be going, oh my gosh, you're gonna remove pages. Yes, absolutely. We have to thin out this book. Um, if you think about it, uh, I think this book here, we'll just show it real quick again. Um, this book has like 12 layouts on it. Um, one, this is a three page spread here. Two, three, four, five, six. That's another three page. Seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15. So this has 15 pages that have been worked on, um, more or less, you know, 15 to 20 pages. So you are taking a book that has mm, 200 pages, right? Mm, 322. And you're going to make probably at the most 20 pages of art. So that means that a lot of these pages have to get together. Uh, get glued together and then some of them have to be removed. So what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to take you down to the table. I'm going to show you that process super fast and then you can prep your book and we will be ready 
to go next week. Okay, let's come down to the table. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I'm going to do this this way so that you can see it. All right, you see this thread right here, right? That is the center of this signature. Where was the end? This was the end. Nice of them to do that for me. So I'm going to glue this page to this page. And so this has nine pages in this signature. Here's a good way to tell whether it's a signature. See all those pages that are um, grouped together. Try not to cut those strings. You do not want to do that. But we are going to remove, uh, say we want four on each side, two, three, four. So we're going to remove quite a few pages out of this signature. I don't think we want six. Um, okay, I'm gonna play it safe and leave six. So we are going to two, three, I am removing three pages from this signature. Now you can do it one at a time. It works a little better. Don't, 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 don't break your strings. It will mess with the integrity of the pages. The pages will start to come out. One, keep these pages for later. Um, it's really always good to have these size pages to work on around. All right. So, we have one, two, perfect, all right, clean these guys out. Now, let's talk adhesives real quick. I buy Mod Podge. I use Mod Podge pretty much so exclusively for gluing my pages together and for a lot of my adhesion. You can use um, matte medium. You can use, oh, the Golden makes one, Ranger makes one. They're all over out there. Um, use whatever makes you happy. I prefer Mod Podge. You can use something like Elmer's Glue. I don't uh, suggest it because it's not an archival product. And you don't want your pages turning yellow or falling apart in 50 years. You want it to work well. Now, that is that gallon of Mod Podge has been, of course, here, just a second. A gallon of Mod Podge <clears throat> has uh, been put into a squirt bottle here. And I also have a jelly jar that I use for my Mod Podge. Why do I buy it by the gallon? Well, because it's $30 for a gallon versus uh, $10 for a much smaller amount. I do not like to pay that much money. Uh, the gallon is much more economical to me. I know that I will use all of it. I'm not worried about it. So you saw how I folded that page down. There we go. And then I'm gonna do this next one. The squirt bottle makes life easy. We like easy. Now this paintbrush has been a long time friend. Uh, truly, it has been used and used and used and used. And uh, it is time to replace it. It has been a bit abused because I left it in water, um, but I have used this paintbrush for probably, oh gosh, well, I've had this brush probably for 20 years, right? Um, here's the center of the signature. I'm going to be shopping for paintbrushes soon, and um, we will test them out and see which one is the best one to go with. I will put Amazon links for the Mod Podge and for um, a squirt bottle and the different things that we're gonna use just for the beginning prep of the book. And those items um, will be on an Amazon list, so all you have to do is click the link and that will take you to the product. Um, I am an Amazon associate, so they do give me a couple pennies if you do that. Uh, they give me a small commission for my recommendation. 
I would really love it, guys, um, if you were to help me out by using my Amazon links. Again, it's a small commission. I'm not making a ton of money off of it, but every little penny helps, right? The full-time artist, I need some pennies. All right, so we are finishing up this signature. Now, remember, I said that this page needs to be paint, uh, glued to the first page here. So we are going to make a three-er right here, right? Uh, we are gluing three pages together. So other adhesives that I always have on my table real quick. So just to let you know, we're almost prepped with that whole signature. We removed the pages. We are gluing those pages down. Um, we have found the signature. We are just making sure, and then I'm going to do these three pages together, just to recap that. All right, I'm gonna bring you back up. Okay, so super fast, here we go. The other adhesives that I have on my table are Tacky Glue, Fabri-Tac, which this is a must-have supply. It truly is. And of course, my Mod Podge. I also use E6000 for those elements that really don't want to stick. E6000 is like your super glue. Okay, so I will put these in the list also. We're gonna start a master list of most recommended products. I'm gonna get um, some paint brushes tested for you. And that's it. That is the Altered Book 101. Guys, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Love you bunches. And we've got a lot of exciting things coming up. All right. Mwah. We will chat soon. All right.